driving back from Lowe's, I got the rest of my lumber. Another 60 bucks. So, uh, let's see, $130 I'm into this outdoor kitchen so far. And on the way home, I've been sitting here kind of thinking about people, fearful people, people who worry so much that the worry consumes them and it prevents them from going on about life. It prevents them from taking action. And I'm going to use an example. Uh, some people don't ride a motorcycle because it is so dangerous, and it is. It's, you know, I don't know, 10 times more dangerous than a car. I mean, if you have a wreck on a motorcycle, you're far more likely to die and or far more likely to be hurt terribly. But once you put your leg over the motorcycle and let the clutch out and you feel the wind and you hear the engine and you're leaning into curves, all that fear goes away because you're enjoying life. That doesn't mean it's any less dangerous. It means that you're not letting fear rule your life. And I encounter a lot of these people in my comment section that because they're fearful, they're warning you, they want you to be fearful. Because fear paralyzes them and stops them from doing certain things. They want you to stop. It's like they want to infect you with their fear and worry. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying I don't have fears. Ah, I better put this on. Hi. It's not that I don't have fears. It's that I don't let them consume me and stop me from doing things. Okay, I guess I better pay attention. Well, we went from uh, pouring rain to a beautiful sunny day. So, let me tell you what happened uh, this morning. My wife's son had a shirt on that said, uh, I voted for Biden. And I said, why are you wearing that shirt? He said, well, it's a social experiment. And I said, so how's it been gone so far? You know, what's happened so far? He said, well, so far I've been spit on, kicked, punched, and cursed. And I said, well, yeah, and it's going to get even worse when you leave the house. All right, I am uh, done with the walls, the side walls. Now I'm going to build the upper cabinet. And uh, see what I've done here. I want to do the same thing up just below that joist across here. And then I'm going to go beyond it with my uh, uh, not siding, you know, uh, crap, fence pickets. All right. I'm going to drink a cup of coffee and uh, I got to get my wife out here on the ladder on the outside because uh, this is, I've had to screw these in from the outside. So uh, I'm gonna have to get her on the ladder to screw in up up here. All right. Uh, by this afternoon, I will have my lights screwed up under here. Uh, the shelves in. Tomorrow, I get my stove. We're getting there. All right. Now I gotta make the door. Make the door, and then. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, wiring, probably. And also, I'm probably going to mount my CB up under here somewhere. I got my coax running there. Just because uh, I want to leave it out here. I don't think it'll get wet. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a break and then measure this hole and go down and make my, my door. It'll look sort of like that. Well, here's a bit of a conundrum. Uh, propane, which is behind that door, is heavier than air. So if there was a leak, it would settle. Hydrogen gas, which is what happens when a battery is charged, although uh, when a battery is charged to such a, a slow uh, when a, a trickle charger, it 
barely produces any hydrogen gas, but hydrogen gas is lighter than air. So I've got to put vents in the bottom of this for the propane and vents in the top of this to vent the possible hydrogen gas coming from the battery being charged. Well, I'm glad I Googled it. I thought I was just going to get away with putting uh, below the, the two by four there. I was going to pop a couple of uh, vents, two inch vents, circular, but uh, I'll have to put them in the top at, as well. All right, I'm fixing to get up and go make that door. All right, there's my door. This is going to require some hands and knees work, which is the hardest thing to do for me. Get down on my hands and knees. So let me get this uh, screwed together here. All right, got her built. Now I'm going to go up there and make sure it it actually fits in there and if it fits i'm gonna put my hinges on the side it's kind of a heavy door so i'm gonna go ahead with three even though it's not as big as that but uh i got plenty of hinges so i'd rather have one more than not enough all right i gotta get one of those uh barrel bolts I think I have one. I just got to get on my shop and get it. Let me give you a, a far away look. Okay, I'm gonna. I got a cup of coffee. I'm gonna drink my coffee. Then I'm going to get my 12 volt LED lights out and screw them. One here and one here. Uh, I am going to get some vents. I just ordered them. Move, baby. Move, 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 move. Breezy, move. Come up here. Up here. Right here. There you go. Oh. I, uh, I've i ordered them. And uh, I'm going to put two on each side at the bottom and two on each side at the top. And that will uh, keep me aired out. Okay. So uh, I guess I'll get them lights up. And then come night time, I'll give you a, a night shot. Maybe not this video. Uh, I still got to work on a, a switch. I don't know what kind of switch I want to use. I, I have a rocker, uh, rocker switch that I may use. We'll see. But anyway, there we go. I, I get my stove tomorrow, but if it's nice tomorrow, we're probably going to ride the motorcycles. I got my brand new hose to go from the tank to the stove. And the stove I got is just a single burner propane stove. And my wife, she's going to get a crock pot and a uh, griddle. And I am going to run some electricity out here just so we can uh, plug things in. Okay. Thanks for watching, y'all. That's the end of it. Let me, uh, I wish I could get further away. And I wish it was a little brighter in here. Got a couple things to do. Put a bolt up there. Put my lights under there. Uh, drill my, uh, put my vents in there. And it'll be done but this is like 99% done right now.